So let's get into the legal terminology. So the, this is relevant for married couples. So if you're in a married relationship or you will soon be in a married relationship and you're looking to apply for a subclass A2801 or the subclass 30100, or as I said, the 461 New Zealand citizen um, or the NZ189, this is what the law says if you're applying under the grounds of spouse. So what you see here guys is an extract from the law. This is not an extract from the department website. I'm giving you the authoritative source here. Now what it's trying to say is uh, we're looking at the requirements for the subclass 820, okay? But this is the same for the subclass 309. And for those applying for the PMV, bear with me, I will get to PMV in a minute. Um, what it's telling you is this is criteria that must be satisfied at the time of application. Okay, so you can see that it says very clearly criteria to be satisfied at time of application. And it says an applicant must you know, be the spouse or de facto partner of an Australian citizen, eligible New Zealand citizen, permanent resident, okay? That's what the law says. Now, when we look at what that means, so we actually go a bit further, we say, okay, it says we must be the spouse. What does that mean? Well, for the purposes of the act, and again, this is taken from the Migration Act, okay, this is from the law, someone is in a married relationship if they are married to each other in a marriage that is valid, if they have a mutual commitment to a shared life as a married couple to the exclusion of all others, if the relationship between them is genuine and continuing, and that they live together or do not live separately apart on a permanent basis, okay? Fancy words, fancy words. What, what does all that mean? Well, you can see at the bottom it says, subsection three, the regulations may make provisions in relation to the determination of whether or not anything of the above is satisfied. So what that's trying to say is that we can look at more to see what it actually means to be married to each other, to have a mutual commitment, that the relationship is genuinely continuing if they live together or do not live separately apart. I mean, what does that actually mean? Well, when we dig deeper, we go one level deeper, the law says, in order, I'm just trying to look at my screen, it's very small, uh, in order for someone to meet the definition of spouse, okay, the case officer can look at certain matters. There's certain things they can look at. They can look at the financial aspects of the relationship. So if you look at subsection three, three A, they can look at the financial aspects of the relationship. They can look at the nature of the household. They can look at the social aspects and they can look at the nature of the person's commitment to each other. Those are the four aspects, the four pillars of your relationship that a department case officer has to assess you against in determining if you are in a spousal relationship, if you are the spouse of an Australian citizen, permanent resident or eligible New Zealand citizen. It's not about just being married, it's about whether or not those four aspects show that you live like a married couple. Now, you know, it gives you some examples in terms of, okay, what are they going to look at under the financial aspects? Well, they're going to look at any joint ownership of real estate, any major assets, any joint liabilities, the extent of your pooling your of your financial resources, um, whether or not in the relationship someone owes a legal obligation to someone else or one partner owns a legal obligation to another and uh, the basis of the sharing of day-to-day -day household expenses. Do you pull your finances to pay for your living expenses? That's the financial aspects. The nature of your household, you know, they're going to look at any joint responsibility for the care of any children. Do you have children together? Do you have children from previous relationships that you both care for? Uh, the living arrangements of the persons, you know, how do you live together? What, what does that exactly look like? Do you rent? Do you own property? Do you live with friends and family? Do you live with friends? Do you not live together? Do you live, you know, what are your arrangements? Um, we'll talk about the four aspects in a lot more detail tomorrow, guys. I'm just showing you the legal framework first, okay? Uh, and, you know, any sharing of the responsibility of the housework. How do you share your responsibilities as a couple? Who does the cooking? Who does the cleaning? What does your household look like on a day-to-day -day basis? Then they look at your social aspects whether the persons represent themselves to other people as being married to each other. Do your friends and family know about your marriage? Are they supportive of your marriage? Which isn't a necessarily a criteria, I'm gonna put an asterisk there. Uh, but you know, do your, do your social, does your social circle, do your friends and family know about your relationship? Are they aware? Do you portray yourselves to be in a relationship to your friends and family? The opinions of the persons, friends and acquaintances about the nature of your relationship. What do your friends and family think about your relationship? 
What have they said in their supporting statements, in their Form Triple H? What have they written? You know, what are the words that have used that have been used in their supporting statements for your application? Uh, and any basis on which the person plan to undertake joint social activities? Do you have joint wedding invitations? Have you been on holidays together? Have you gone to festivals together? Have you gone to concerts together? Uh, do you have joint gym memberships? You know, that's the social aspects. The nature of your commitment, the fourth and final aspect. How long have you been together for? The duration of your relationship. Okay, that's a factor. That's something they're going to look at when assessing the nature of your commitment. The length of time during which the persons have lived together. How long have you lived together for before applying? At the time of application, how long have you lived together for? The degree of companionship and emotional support that you draw from each other. Okay, so you know the nature of your commitment is a bit of a, it's a grayer area. It's harder to define. They're looking for a little bit more, I suppose, emotive topics and concepts to, for you to describe to them, to show them. How much companionship and emotional support, how much does your relationship mean to the two of you? What have you said in your relationship statements uh, about the nature of your commitment to one another? What are your plans together? Whether or not the persons see their relationship as a long-term one. Is your relationship going to be forever? Is that what you've said? Is that what you've said in your statements? Do you see children? Do you see marriage? Do you see property ownership? Where do you see this going? Or do you just see it's a short-term thing? Okay, that's what they're going to look at. Those are the four aspects from a legal point of view. Okay, so it's not about your marriage certificate if you're in a married relationship. It's about those four aspects. It's about those factors under the four aspects. Do they all show that you live like a married couple? Not that you are married. Anyone can get married. Anyone can go to the local registry office and register a marriage. That does not mean that you are in a spousal relationship for the purposes of a partner visa. You need to meet this criteria. This is what they're looking for. Legal terminology, de facto. Okay, so there's going to be couples in the group that are married and there's going to be couples that are not married. Now, if you're not married, unless you're applying for the PMV, which we'll talk about next, if you're applying for the onshore 820 or 82801 or the offshore 309100, if you're not married, you must be de facto. You cannot be boyfriend, girlfriend, okay? Because again, we look at the criteria for the 820, which is the same for the 309, okay? It's the same criteria. At the time of application, the applicant must be either the spouse, which we've just talked about, we just looked at what the definition of spouse is, or de facto partner of an Australian citizen or permanent resident. So spouse we know, what does de facto partner mean? What does it mean to be the de facto partner of an Australian citizen or permanent resident? Again, we look at the law. De facto partner means someone is in a de facto relationship. Now, what does it mean to be in a de facto relationship? Well, basically identical to what it means to be in a spousal relationship. They have a mutual commitment to a shared life to the exclusion of all others. The relationship between them is genuine and continuing. They live together or do not live permanently apart. They are not related by family, okay? Same, same if not identical to the definition of spouse. And again, it says the regulations may make provisions in relation to any of that. So what it's saying is, if we look at the migration regulations, it's going to tell us what will a case officer actually take into consideration in determining if you have a mutual commitment, if, you, if the relationship is genuine and continuing, and if you live together or do not, do not live separately apart and if you are not related by family. And again, you know, the regulations say that we have to look at the four aspects. It's the same thing. You have to be able to show that the financial aspects the nature of your household, cohabitation, the social, the social aspects, and the nature of your commitment to one another, which is all the same. They're, they're the same requirements to if you're married. The difference is you don't have a marriage certificate. That's the difference between applying as a de facto couple or as a married couple. It's that one certificate. Everything else is effectively the same. Okay, it's the same four aspects. It's the same factors under each aspect. It's the same documentation. It's the same requirements.